Hello, I'm Linda Ann Smith, video creator for Color Art. Today I'm going to show you how to make this steampunk dragonfly. You'll need these Color Art products, primary elements in several colors and primary elements clear glaze medium, radiant gels dimensional paint and silks acrylic glazes. If you'll click on show more in the video description below, I'll list the links and colors that I used in this composition. Here are additional products you'll need. An Artist Loft 12 by 12 inch canvas board. This is chipboard from Gen what used to be Genus Designs, but now it's called Gypsy Soul Laser Cuts. Americana stencil called Gears and Cogs. Joint compound from Mini Hardware Store. And just for a little added fun, I threw in this dap uh, spackling compound that changes from pink to white when it's dry. 18 gauge copper wire, glossy Mod Podge sealer, and E6000 glue, preferably clear, not white. I'll also add a surprise found object. When I'm in creative mode, I want to keep working. I don't want to stop, so I have trouble uh, having the patience to let things dry. Therefore, I'm always, almost always, working on a second canvas or even a third canvas in the background. Once I finish that first canvas, I pick up the second one that's in the background and finish it later. Today I'll be working on the background that I made at the same time that I was making the Angel and the Peace Dove composition. All of the products that I'm using on this up to a certain point in the video will be products that were used on another canvas. I don't always remember to turn the camera around to capture what I'm doing on the second canvas. So I may skip from point A to point C or D, but I'll try to fill in the gaps with narration so you'll know what I've done. I'm using the Americana stencil called Gears and Cogs uh, over the top of a canvas board, a 12 by 12 inch canvas board, and I'm using the leftover joint compound mixture that I made with some primary elements for the angel composition. I'm using almost all leftovers from the angel composition. I don't always use joint compound for texture, but I really do enjoy using it. Uh, I use it on most of my compositions for texture. Now this uh, particular stencil, if you noticed right there, it has some areas that lift when you, right here, right here, when you go across the stencil, they'll lift. So you have to be careful about that and keep that in mind, but once you get a little of the joint compound down on the stencil, it's like paste sort of, it just kind of glues down the stencil to the, to the canvas. When I use joint compound as my texture medium, uh, I like to make very sure that it's completely dry before I add any wet product to it. After I lifted this stencil, I let it dry overnight. Once that joint compound is dry, I go over it with some paint. This is paint that was left over from the Angel. You don't want to get it too wet because this first layer of paint helps to seal the structure of the joint compound. This is a mixture of primary elements and primary element uh, clear glaze medium from Color Art. But I've mixed so many different colors together at this point from, for the other project that I don't even really know what colors are in this. But it doesn't matter. It's my first layer. If it were summertime, I might go outside and take a spray sealer where there's good ventilation and take a spray sealer and seal this before I painted it. But I'm using my paint as the sealer today. Because when the weather gets chilly, I don't run out the back door every five minutes. One of the things that I like about the joint compound is if you notice here, the gessoed surface in the background and the joint compound are making this paint look like two different colors, and I like that. Because it absorbs the paint differently, I'm, getting, uh, one, I'm giving one layer to the paint and getting two colors, and that's uh, just a bonus as far as I'm concerned. I'm going to switch now to another color that was left over from the Angel, which is the Lemon Drop that I mi mixture that I made and uh, I'm kind of going around the edges and hitting uh, the tops of the cogs with it. Just play with it. Just have a good time. If you've done much mixed media, you know that the, you can't fall in love with your first layers anyway. Your first layers hardly ever show up. So I'm going to let the paint tell me what to do today. Once you add a few more layers, I doubt if you're going to see much of this anyway. As I went forth with my Angel video, I had more and more colors to add, and I'm going to fast forward through a lot of this because I'm not sure 
what colors I'm adding in some places. Um, I believe, though, this is the Blue Pearl Radiant Gels. In fact, I know it is. It, I had some out on my palette, and I didn't want to waste it, and I didn't want to put it back in the jar, so it went on this canvas. But did you ever wonder why the first layers aren't the ones that you end up using? It's because the richness of the final layer depends upon what you use underneath the colors that you have. The, all the old masters knew this. They understood that what they started with was not going to be the end result. Okay, we're finished working with two canvases. Now I'm moving over to this canvas entirely, and I'm going to use this Dry Dex. It's another kind of joint compound. It, they call it spackling. But if you look here, it says Dry Time Indicator goes on pink, dries white. It's just another brand I use, and uh, sometimes that's a good brand to begin with. I'm using this from Genus Designs. It's a uh, chipboard that I've used as a stencil several times, and I'm going to use it again as a stencil today. And then I'm going to break it apart and use it on my canvas itself. So I'm laying it down on top of the, here's that pink, uh, real bright pretty pink, but it ends up white. I'm laying it down on top of some of the other textures that I have. And a peculiar thing is, this makes a reverse. It doesn't give me, it's not a stencil really, It uh, the reverse that I get ends up looking like flowers. So I'm I already know before I do this because I've used it before as a, as a stencil for joint compound and it's going to look like flowers when I raise it up, not like gears. So I already know that I'm going to be covering most of this with something else that's in my plans. Can you believe I made a plan? The precautions uh, I want to give you about this pink uh, indicator is that if you're going to use a heat gun to dry it, as I'm going to do here in a few minutes, uh, it's going to turn white on the outside, but the inside will still be pink. And you can prove that to yourself if you don't believe it. It's still wet inside when you don't let it air dry. Look at those flowers. I told you there were flowers. Okay, so I'm going to take this over to the sink and uh, wash it off once I get all the uh, stenciling done with it. I'm going to wash it off and let it dry. I'm going back to what I was saying again though. It's going to be pink on the inside. It won't be completely dry because when you use a heat gun it heats the outside. So keep that in mind and when you see it turn white with a heat gun you might want to let it dry quite a bit longer. Uh, it doesn't take that long with thin layers but you will, you'll need to have it completely dry just like any other joint compound before you continue to seal it with paint. You'll want to put your lid back on your joint compound or spackling. Uh, I don't know the difference between spackling and joint compound, but you'll want to put the lid back on immediately so it won't dry out. And here I go with the heat gun. And as you see, it starts turning lighter and lighter pink until it finally goes white. I'm beginning with Spiced Pumpkin in the Radiant Gels, and I'm going to paint some of these gears from the chipboard uh, from Genus Designs. And actually, before I finish, I'll probably use almost every color of Radiant Gel that I have in my studio. I'm just going to put a lot of color on these. I'm going to dab on Key Lime next in the Radiant Gels. Radiant Gels are dimensional paint and so it just makes these gears even thicker and more durable. And I'm not putting it all over everything. I, I just dab here and there because I want them to be very, very colorful. And this is one of my favorite colors. Indian Copper uh, really puts a lot of shimmer onto whatever object you're painting. I'm just dabbing here and there, and I'm not doing every piece with every color. I'm moving on now to Emperor's Gold, and it's another one of my favorite colors. I have a lot of favorites in color arts. 
And another one of those favorites is coming up here. It's called Guatemalan Green. Just love this. One of my very, very, very favorites. That little turquoise color actually turns green when I put it on top of some of these other colors. But I'll keep working with it until I have a little more of the uh, actual color of Guatemalan Green on it. Moving right along, I'm bringing in the color Twilight in the Radiant Gels. Other colors I'm adding to these gears are Olive Vine, Vavum Red, and Yellow Rose. The more the paint dries, the more shimmery it gets, and the more layers that you build up seems to add more shimmer. I'm going back to my canvas now. I've given it enough time to dry, and I'm going to use this Chestnut Brown in the uh, Silks Acrylic Glazes. Now, Silks will move when they get wet, so I already know that this is going to move when I start putting other colors on it, but I'm going to let that be part of my design. Does it surprise anyone that the silks are an acrylic glaze and that they can still be reactivated? It did me because I thought uh, that all acrylics were permanent. Once you put them down and they dried, they were gone. Well, this, if you get it on your clothes, it's going to be pretty permanent. But when you touch this with another color, this is called a soft acrylic. I didn't know there were soft acrylics. I learned something. I think I might have mentioned this to you in another video at some time, but it just amazes me because all these years I thought that all acrylics were permanent. It's no big deal. Just remember that when you use silks, if you don't want them to move when you get them wet with uh, maybe a old, like Mod Podge, which I'm going to use later, if you get it wet with Mod Podge, it's going to move. So if you don't want that to move, you're going to need to seal it with an acrylic sealer before you move on. And the best kind of acrylic sealer for these to keep them from moving would be a spray-on. I put that chestnut brown color on with a brush, but then I used a makeup sponge to blend it into the rest of the painting. And uh, again, I'm still using a soft brush. I'm using a fan brush that's soft but I don't really have to at this point because I've already had a layer of paint uh, uh, seal that joint compound area. The Color Art products all dry very fast, so I'm going to work on these pieces of chipboard design from Gina's Designs. Uh, these are the same thing that I used earlier as a stencil, and they made the little flower shapes, but now I'm going to prepare them to go directly on my canvas because I'm, uh, I'm finished using them as stencils. So I'm coating them with some Indian copper first. When you can use your chipboard as a stencil first and then use it later on a canvas, you're getting a lot of mileage out of it. And this was a big sheet that I tore apart, so I've already used some on some other composition that I've done. I'll continue adding layers of colors to these uh, just like I did to the gears. I placed the loose gears on top of my canvas to get an idea of how they were going to look when I glued them down. And then I started pulling them up one by one, putting a little Mod Podge under them, and gluing them in place. And when I say I used a little bit of Mod Podge, I told a fib because that's not true. I started out trying to place these and they kept popping up because they bend whenever you paint them, they kind of curl sometimes. And I, these have been through the mill, they've been used so much. And it kept popping up. And I was holding it down and it kept popping up. So pretty soon I just flooded it with Mod Podge and went back as I needed to and pushed them down. As the Mod Podge had dried, they stayed on. It, they did a really good job of staying on. And the Mod Podge adds another layer because it's a glossy. You can get it in uh, you can get Mod Podge that's not glossy, but I prefer the glossy. If you look at the bottom right hand corner, you can see how I really did flood this area with Mod Podge. And now I'm pushing down with the end of my paintbrush the areas that were I thought were coming up or I was concerned about. I'm pushing down each little one. And once the Mod Podge dried, it was fine. It um, Once it got tacky, it held everything down. Also, you can see here how the chestnut brown silk 
ran when I added the Mod Podge. And like I said, I wanted this effect, so I didn't seal it before I added Mod Podge. Now it's sealed. So I gave this some drying time, and I really like the effects of what it looks like now. Here's some close-ups to show you where the paint layers, how beautiful they are when you add uh, one layer on top of another. And then I have some background shots where I didn't add a lot of layers, and it's still shimmery, but it just doesn't have that glow that the rest of it has. Plus, I think that putting shiny layers of Mod Podge over it helped enhance the color. I wanted to get an idea of the size of Dragonfly that I wanted to put on this, so I did on the fold of a piece of parchment paper. I drew Dragonfly wings, then I traced them to the other side. So you can see through the parchment paper, I can use either side of it. But this gives me an opportunity to kind of turn the canvas and see which way I want to place the Dragonfly and whether it's the right size or not. I can pull up one edge, see if it's inside the lighter area and it looks like these wings are going to fit just fine. So I was thinking a dragonfly made out of uh, this piece of, I believe this came from an old lawn chair, this piece of scrap trash that I found on the ground one day when I opened my car door, and I pick up everything. I pick up everybody's trash. But when I started playing with this, thinking about dragonfly wings, I'm really beginning to think that I'm going to have to find a whole lawn chair full of this stuff because I can pull this and shape it the way I want it. It still doesn't come loose, but I'm pulling this to the center. And I really like the way this looks. You know how when you look at the dragonfly wings, they have all these little sections and I can pull some of them wider and some of them closer together, and it, I think we're going to see more lawn chair dragonflies in the future. If, if you've watched many of my YouTube videos, I guess by now you know that everything's a science experiment with me, and uh, I'm playing with this, trying to figure out how I'm going to shape it and how I'm going to make it stiff. I also wouldn't care if I had something between those little uh, openings there to, that was clear, uh, so I'm thinking I'll try some of my different kinds of mediums. I've noticed when I'm trying to clean up that one of the most difficult mediums to remove from nonstick surfaces just happens to be the, co the primary element from col Color Arts, the clear glaze medium. So I'm spreading that on here. I have this old spatula that got um, warped when it got too warm here, but it works really nicely as an art tool. And I'm going to spread that on the wings or the uh, lawn chair strapping. And I'm going to let that dry and see what happens. It's not a bad thing that it's uh, more difficult to remove. It's removable from the nonstick surfaces. It just takes a little more elbow power. And I'm thinking in this case, it just might serve exactly what I need. I want it sturdy and I want it shiny. And so we'll just experiment. And if it's not the right thing, well, old lawn chairs just aren't that difficult to find. This project took several days to do because of drying time, plus I'd only had a short time to work each day. And uh, I'm not sure why I did that on top of my pattern, but I'm going to spread it out so that uh, the pattern's more stable. I'm ready to begin the dragonfly's body now, and I am going to start with... 18-gauge uh, copper wire. This used to be really easy to find in any hardware store, but since the theft of copper got so high, they're not carrying as much. So I just happened to have a couple of rolls uh, left over from my jewelry making days. If you can't find copper wire in your hardware store, try asking the clerk or the manager because sometimes they keep it in the back now. I clipped a piece off to start the body and I'm going to place it here on the canvas background that I'm going to use just to see if it's going to approximately fit the space that I want it to be in. I folded this in half and now I'm clipping it off and it's approximately the right length to make the dragonfly. I cut another wire and I'm going to start wrapping it around those two wires to form the body. Before I attach it, I'll make a little loop on the end so there won't be any sharp wires sticking out. Hindsight is such a great thing. I didn't realize I started on the wrong end. I should have started on the ends where the two wires were loose and open cut ends. 
that's that was my intention, but I started on the wrong end, so I made it work anyway. The it, the tail's going to be just a little bit thicker right at the bottom, which doesn't bother me. I kind of draw my dragonflies that way anyway, and then I can fold that loop back under to make an anchor to glue the dragonfly down. Um, here it is all finished, and there's the two loose ends to make the eyes. So this is, I folded that under. It's going to make an anchor. That's not a problem. And this is the body of the dragonfly. I'm going to put it here, make sure that it's going to fit. And that, that looks like it's going to work because it'll be a lot shorter than this when I roll the eyes down. Um, I'm going to coil this wire to make the eyes. I'm starting with this pair of pliers uh, that has a flat area on it to curl up the ends, but then I'll switch to these round ones and that'll help me continue curling. It is so hard for me to stay in camera when I'm doing this because I really need to anchor it against my body to twist it. My hands uh, just don't work as, as readily as they used to. But I'm going to twist this. Maybe you can see what I'm doing here. And this will form the eyes. Now they'll be far apart probably when I get both of them curled down there. But once I get it finished, uh, I'll use the wire to pull these eyes up close together and that makes that basically makes the head of the dragonfly. I used to use these tools in making jewelry and doing some wire wrapping work and it's not the struggle that I seem to be having. I'm trying so hard to keep it in under the canvas. As I said, when I work it up very close to my body, I hold it right against my body with one hand and work with the other hand it seems to steady it more and I don't have this struggle that you're seeing on screen. So here's what it looks like when I got through making the eyes and I will add another piece of wire to this and start forming the body. In fact there's a little gap between my wires and right there at the top there and that's where I'll start my next wire. And uh, the wings will cover this so they don't have to be perfect but you see I'm spreading this apart to get it started. And now I'm giving the wire a little twist on the end so it'll be easier to wrap around that area where I want to start the, the body proportion, the thicker portion that will be below the eyes. And then I just continue to wrap the, that wire that I just attached all the way up to the eyes that I've made and that'll bring them together more. And there they are. Now I'm going to go back down the body and start wrapping back down and that'll create a thicker body area and then the tail will be the thinner part. I'm just checking to see what the placement's going to look like again. Allowing that medium to be on the back of the parchment paper did stabilize that uh, pattern a lot. Now I'm going to push this down over the pattern. Now there's there's bubbles in this. It doesn't lie flat, but I think when I cut those apart to make the wings, I don't think I'm going to have a problem. So I'm kind of looking through this to see where I want these textures to fall. I think it would be easier if I cut the pattern out, so I'm cutting out the wings. And I'm taking that uh, wing over to the netting and, or the, I don't know what to call this, the lawn chair straps and outlining. I'll be able to see this little faint black outline when I get finished. And I'm cutting on the fold to make sure that they're cut correctly. I'm going to cut out the bottom wings also. I think I can just eyeball that. And so there's my wings. And they look like they're going to work just fine. I'm going to bring the wire back down around and incorporate the wings. Everything looked fine except I didn't like the color of the wings against the canvas. So I decided to use Celadon Radiant Gel uh, Dimensional Paint and I know I'm going to lose some transparency. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and use some dragonfly colors on these wings. Some, some, this is a greenish color. I'm going to use some violet 
colors and some blue colors and green colors and put them all together. They're all going to be radiant uh, gels. And I'll work the, the layers back and forth until I get something that I like. My next layer is going to be Periwinkle Radiant Gels. Kind of looks like a bow on a package right now, but it won't when I get finished. And this red violet color is called Bavu Red. Love that name. So I'm darkening the edges here and then I'll blend it and then I'll add more colors, one layer on top of another. And um, I did lose the transparency, I knew I was going to. Uh, but there's other lawn chairs out there and there's other canvases, so I am going to do a transparent lawn chair dragonfly sometime in the future, as soon as I find somebody throwing away a lawn chair with this uh, strapping or uh, webbing in it. I'm thinking a little of this, of this Indian copper will make the body and the wings look like they're one unit more. If I add a little of this and, or a lot, I really kind of like this color, I always have. So it's really shimmery and I think that'll make it go with the, the copper body that I've already made. Now adding a little bit more of the celadon and I'm going to work up the layers back and forth until I get somewhere where I like it. Once the dragonfly was finished, I used E6000 glue to attach it to the canvas. But be careful when you buy this because I'm accustomed to buying clear E6000 and lately the stores have been carrying white. I got the wrong one. It doesn't dry clear, so I had to be careful about not getting excess glue running out from under the dragonfly. When the glue was dry, I did some touch-up painting on both the dragonfly and the background canvas. And here are the results. check out my personal channel on YouTube. I try to put up at least a video every week. A good way to be sure you don't miss any videos is to subscribe to the channel. Look for the links to both Color Arts channel and my channel in the video description below. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you'll give me a thumbs up and make a comment. And don't forget to check out the uh, links for Color Art below. They have a blog and a Facebook pages and something going on all the time. Thank you for watching.